so hello guys welcome back and we are again uh, in the spree of making and solving problems for you guys for the people who are actually trying to give the iit jam ms examination in the next uh, you know 2023 so uh, i think it's a good time to start your preparation and yep that's it so um, also i think that um, uh, in this series that we will starting i am planning to uh, solve the problems of the past year IIT Jam MS. That way, uh, instead of the live problem solving that we had, in so that you can have some ideas of how to solve problems, how to think about problems, and how it can really help you in your problem solving nature. So, um, okay, so let's get started, guys. And uh, uh, today I'll be discussing so two IIS, uh, IIT Jam two zero two one sequence and series problems uh, that I had. And uh, I have done a few, and I will be doing the few more left uh, in this discussion. I think four are left today. Uh, so let's get started, guys. And yep, um, yeah, that's it. So, OK, so just give me a moment. Yes, so perfect. So the first question, it's uh, question number 24 of 2021. And um, in that question, it's asked. It's given a two series, OK? S and T and the series are defined as it's showing on the board and um, the series uh, it's asked about the relationship or the value of the series so if you observe the series it's, if you observe the series of the form uh, you know summation of p x to the power k by k okay in that with minus 1 to the power k format so it's summation x to the power k by k format so if you remember this is this is contained in the exponential uh, you know the exponent in the log or uh, expansion so so therefore uh, we look into this this is the you know the uh, the point which leads you to this solution uh, idea so we have this log one plus x when mod x is less than one then you can have this uh, series around zero uh, this terrace uh, power series of x uh, of log one plus x and you get the series and if you observe these are the very tremendously um uh, familiar uh algebraic look with this if you can write the s in terms of one by four by one and this and t is in terms of right, where x is equal to one by five and here x is equal to one by four but observe here it's alternately plus one minus like ne positive negative positive negative but in t it's um no just only positive okay so therefore you can write that s is equal to log one plus one by four remember mod x is less than one which is satisfied here so you can write like this so it's log five by four and similarly uh, the t1 is uh we have to transform that so that's all the coefficients are positive and you can write like one minus x it turns out to be minus x minus x square by two minus x cube by three and you can see that if you replace x by minus x, and if you just put a minus sign in front of it, you will get that you will get the positive, you know, x plus x squared by two plus x squared by x cubed by three, and the sequence. So now, if you put x is equal to one by a five over there, you will get the corresponding uh, t as minus of log one minus one by five, which is minus of four by five, which is equal to log four by five, ln four by five, I should say. So you can see that s is equal to two uh, t, and uh, we get that in this option a so this is the uh, problem number 24 and uh, yes so when you have a series sequence a series problem you try to uh, understand that how you can represent it in known terms known series okay that's usually the way of problem solving um yep so let's move to the next problem uh, so let's start the problem 26 and um yes so it's a very interesting problem. It really dwells into the basics of sequence and series, sequence rather, and the core uh, proving, okay, the core aspects of sequence. Uh, if you observe over here that A1 is um, 5, and uh, it's recursively defined as An plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power 1 by 4 into An whole to the power 3 by 4, okay. And it's asked whether it's a monotone and the limit, about the monotone nature and the limit nature. So understand when you're solving this problem, make sure that, you know, you discover, like, you go, like, in the exam hall, but when you're solving it uh, in the exam hall, remember that you focus on those parts that are only mentioned in the, you know, uh, options. Don't go ahead and do really new stuff out there, but that's not recommended uh, for, 
you know, when you're solving at home at your own pace. So let's see this. Let's observe this. So it's asked about monotone and limit. And um, so whenever you're faced with this kind of problem, uh, you will always, you must always, you know, look into the nature uh, of behavior of A2 and A3 and things ahead. Okay. You should check whether it's monotone really or not. So that's what I did in the first step. And uh, if you observe over here, so I've written on the solution here. I'm just explaining the steps so uh, so that it's helpful for you. If you just want the solution, you can just, you know, pause the video, see the solution, move ahead, okay, for your saving of time if you want that, or you can just fast up the process. Um, uh, so if you observe that A1 is equal to 5 and uh, AN plus 1 is defined like this, and uh, let's take A2 and let's see the observe how A2 is behaving. Uh, observe that a2 is 3 by 1, 3 to the power 1 by 4, a1 whole to the power 3 by 4, which is less than 5 to the power 1 by 4, because 3 is less than 5, and a1 whole to the power 1 by 4. Now, a1 is equal to 5, so it's a1 whole to the power 1 by 4 into a1 whole to the power 3 by 4, and you get a1. So, a2 is less than a1, which is less than 5. I mean, which is equal to 5, so a2 is less than, so it should be equal to, so a2 is less than 5. And here also, you can see that a1 is greater than 3. So you get that a2 is equal to 3 to the power 1 by 4 uh, times a1. Using this idea uh, in the form of a2, you can get that a1 is actually greater than a2, greater than a3. Okay. So you get that maybe a2 is between 3 and 4. Okay. a2 is between 3 and 4. So it gives an intuition to you that maybe it in a, 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 a n in general a n is actually between five and three three and five okay so uh, if you observe that then let's so when you have this notion of proving that maybe it's equal to it's between something so what you do is usually when it's a sequence you prove it by um the methods of by method method of induction strong form of induction or weak form of induction i hope you have learned that in your high school so uh, this is how you prove it. This proving nature is also very important when you are solving problems for your own understanding and also for ISIM stat if you are looking for an exam perspective. So uh, first is the induction steps. So you have to prove uh, 3 less than a n less than 5 and you have uh, 3 less than a n minus 1. This is the, you know, the induction step, the initial step. And from this you have to prove that a n is less than 5 and less than 3 and greater than 3. So you use the same type of idea I have used in uh, while proving this, the result for E2. And uh, AN is greater than, you just use the fact that AN minus 1 is greater than 3 to get uh, that AN is greater than 3. And to use the fact, use the fact AN minus 1 is less than 5 to get the fact that, get the idea that AN is less than 5. So in the same way, okay, I'm not repeating. You can just check it. And once we have this, once we have this, that AN is, less than three and uh, greater than three and less than five, we can use that idea to prove that it's decreasing. So let's say a n is greater than three. So you get a n plus one is um, equal to one by four into a n into three by four. So a n is greater than three. So it turns out it's less than, you can write three is less than a n. So you get a n to the power one by four times a n to the power three by four. If you multiply it, you get a n plus one is less than n, a n. So you get that it's decreasing in nature. And um, yeah, it's decreasing in nature and it's bounded. So when a, when a sequence is decreasing in nature and it's bounded, the result that should come to you about its limit, it's called monotone convergence theorem. And if you, modern, if you use monotone convergence theorem, it tells you that, yes, the limit exists over here, guys, okay? The limit surely exists over here. And if the limit exists, you can assume the limit is L, okay? And you can use it in the actual recurrence relation that L a n plus one is equal to three power one by four a n minus 1, a n times 1 to the power 3 by 4. So you can replace it by L uh, because it's going to the limit. You take limit n times to infinity on both sides. And from that, you get L is equal to 3. So this is the whole solution that you have over here, guys. And also, a n is momentarily decreasing and the limit is 3. So that's the solution. I hope you've understood the step-by-step -step method and the all the aspects of um, you know, the theory and the pieces of puzzles attached in here. I hope you enjoyed this problem like I did. Perfect. Very good. So let's move on to the next problem of 2021. And that is 47th problem. So it's we are all dealing with a sequence and series problems. And uh, so let's see this problem. If you observe this problem, you will see that 
it's given a series format but the series is in different format and the lower bound also the lower bound also goes to infinity and the upper bound also goes to infinity okay so how to deal this with this kind of problem so the basic way to deal with it is very simple that uh, you um, so you try out various methods okay i tried out various methods myself and uh, but the basic idea is that you should try out using inequality first okay whether you can bound it it's called you can use something called sandwich theorem so if you use sandwich theorem, there are a lot of there can be many methods but using if you use sandwich theorem you can get this i have done this using sandwich theorem there can be other methods too so let's explore this so observe that 5 to the power this one the below format this initial one is less than if you observe aim is between n square and 2n square okay uh, so it's this term is less than or equal to if you replace m by n square and greater than or equal to 2n square okay because this is larger than this so it's one by inverse of it will be smaller than this and vice versa so similarly you do the same way out here and uh, you just take the summation now if you take the summation now guys what will happen that um the right side this are all constants okay it doesn't depend on m so what you can do is that if you take the summation this will be the actual series and this left hand side and right hand side will be constant its functions of n and you can observe that it's n square okay it's n square by uh in one it's like there are n square terms out there so the constant is added n square times so it's n square by the below wala um uh, i mean variable expression and n square times below wala, this variance on right hand side and left hand side respectively so now observe that so we have to find it limits okay you have to find limit n a n tends to infinity what this happens so we take the limit on both sides now observe that it's like, like computing the you know ratio of two polynomials in that sense so if you observe if you divide by n square both sides you will get that it's one by this will turn out to be root five plus one by n plus some constant by n square this will turn out and when n tends to infinity this goes to zero so therefore it they, both of them will go to one by root five perfect and now this is the basic idea so now what you will do is the following you will now go ahead and put that alpha here actually this s is nothing but alpha and so we use what property we use the property that you know larger powers i mean okay i i hope you understood that so um so this is the basic solution idea it's use sandys theorem because both the uh rhs and ra are like in the right hand limit and left hand limit are same so there it must go to one by root five and if it goes to one by root five you get you see that it goes to 10 the value is 10 okay I hope you understood this idea and it uses something very important and yep that's it so uh, if you just revise slowly you will see that the first one uses stellar series the second one uses the moon convergence theorem the basic and depth knowledge of sequence this one used the idea of sandwich theorem okay so these are really important problem solving techniques that can really help you in your problem solving and enhance your process of problem solving because after all after learning the theory, your problem solving is the only thing that keeps the an intellectual mind alive and entertained. So, okay, perfect. So let's move ahead to the last problem, I guess. Yes. So it's a really, really easy problem and um, it's a problem number 59. So let alpha be in the, like, it's given alpha is defined like this. Now observe, if you observe first thing when you're doing the limit, guys, observe always the first idea is always the format. What format it is, guys, okay? Is it infinity by infinity? Is it one to the power infinity? Is it zero to the power infinity? What type of format? Because depending on the various formats, we solve in different ways. So let's see the format first. What is the type of this limit? So the type of the limit is the following that Okay, it's a bit, um, I mean, it's too much cluttered over here, but focus as my, you know, as I scroll through the solution. So if you observe that the limit is of this format, so first check that where the, uh, what is the type? This is checking the type, okay? If you check the type, you observe that one by n square goes to zero. So three by n square also goes to zero. Okay. And if three by n square goes to zero, then, um, sin 3 by n square by 3 by n square will go to 1 because sin x by x goes to 1 as x tends to 0 
okay it's a subsequence of that function so therefore that that really uh, helps us in understanding that n times sine 3 by n square will behave like 3 by n okay which will go to zero okay that's the basic idea so this for this this term will go to zero and you can easily understand this term is going to infinity very good perfect now given this knowledge when you have therefore it's of the form what it's of the form one to the power infinity format guys okay that is the format now now observe it very carefully that what what you can we can use you cannot use l'hopital rule directly uh, in sequence okay because l'hopital rule has a different aspect to it also there's a result okay you can use you prove using l'hopital rule that uh, so this is a basic idea this is a core idea that instead of taking the sequence you take f of that sequence okay f of n and you know that f of x is going to that limit if you can prove f of x going to that limit then a subsequence of this because if a function goes to a certain limit all the subsequence all the sequences that can be created out of that function also go to the same limit if x goes to infinity okay so similarly if you observe over here that uh we will try to do it in terms of the function because we have the result in terms of the function only so let's observe this that if you did the result this is a very important result that can really help you out that limit fx is this that its limit extends to infinity 1 plus gx whole to the power hx where gx is going towards zero and hx is going towards infinity okay understand this very carefully i'm just explaining to you once again so 1 plus gx whole to the power hx okay this goes towards zero this goes towards infinity by the exponential you know the exponential property the limit of the exponential one plus gx i'm giving you the proof idea whole to the power one by gx this will go to the e okay since gx is going towards zero and therefore to adjust with it observe this is nothing but one plus one by one plus gx whole to the power 1 by gx uska hold to the power gx times hx now this gx is cancelling this out so therefore observe that this turns out to be limit e to the power limit extends to infinity hx into gx okay this only it can happen if you have these two conditions over here and if you put this put this value over here hx and gx value correspondingly you have to x square sin 3 by x square and use the same idea over here that i've used here so that sine 3 by x square by 3 by x square will go to 1. So the corresponding adjusting factor is 6. So therefore, this limit will be 6. That means this will be e to the power 6. So you need to find log of this limit. That is, it will turn out to be 6. So this is the basic idea, guys. I hope you enjoyed the problem solving out here. So we solved four problems. You saw the first one was on Taylor series. The next one was based on Monotonic convenience theorem and basics of you know the sequences the next one is sinus theorem and this one finally is using that interesting you know the idea of how to move towards a function and using that one to the point infinity format of solutions guys so this these are the four solutions that i have left uh, I, I have you know uh, i have left over in the 2021 solution in sequence and series so we will move ahead to other topics also guys so thank you for staying tuned thank you for staying blessed and yeah i will see you in the next video stay tuned and stay blessed and if you're looking for some preparation courses for ID Jam for 2023, you can check our comment sections, uh, not comment section, the description section. I hope it can help you. There are a lot of free resources available in our YouTube channel also. So thank you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned and stay blessed. Bye-bye.